God bless you guys. This is Sean here from Faith Brings Change. I just want to come on here and, uh, well, I want to talk to you guys because I think I may have found the uh, false prophet. I, I had a dream a while back when I was asking about these two, if either or two of them come from America and Jesus didn't answer me and the dream had already started. I'd been in the wilderness and, you know, you're with God. And then suddenly a thought comes in your mind, you know, a question comes up and it was, is the Antichrist from America, you know, and he didn't answer me. But, and part of the stream was parabolic and I'll kind of get into it, just try to do it briefly. I had seen some image at some point, it was almost like looking at, we were in a coliseum and I could see. Well, I'll start out. I was looking through some kind of, uh, it was almost like a movie, and I was looking at somebody's back. Like when you see in the movie, you can see them maybe from the waist up, maybe uh, from the back of the calves up, or something like that. And the camera zooms in, and then they kind of turn their head slightly backward into the camera and look at you kind of menacing. It was sort of like that. And this guy had longer hair, for, first for, I guess, the Beast or Antichrist, maybe, perhaps. And it was the image that he used to show me that that person turning was, a, uh, what do you call it, Kylo Ren from the new Star Wars movie. And if you know anything about him, he was a, a son of Han Solo, like a man who does his own thing. You know, Han means hate. It actually, in the Chinese culture, hate Solo. You know, you go Solo. You don't want anything to do with anybody. And then uh, in his... Mother was the daughter of Darth Vader, and daughter, Jesus told me, it represents uh, the soul of Darth Vader, you could say, because the daughter is for the soul. The man represents the mind, and where he told me this was, the man is the giver of life, the giver of seed, like the spirit gives life. You know, the flesh profits nothing, and the woman being for the soul is the receiver. The, the mind receives from the spirit, you know the spirit of god we receive information in our mind and so that's how he was telling me the daughter you know in the family unit represents the soul and so his mother was the soul you could say of darth vader the mind of darth vader the mother can also is for the body when you look at that and so he had a kind of the body of darth vader you could say but anyways I saw him standing there, and he turned, and he looked, and it was like almost like a corona mask. It was one of those oxygen masks you have that it basically uh, a black mask, and, and, and he took it off, and it was during that time of the corona, but he took it off, but it was burn up his face from below where the, uh, the mask had been, you know, like he's speaking from hell, and he turned and looked at me, and he had these demonic looking eyes, just evil looking, long hair, and he had opened, they'd opened that, uh, vault he was standing in front of, it was, was turned out to be like a, a, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, a walk-in freezer for, like, a meat department, and he took me, and I was just thrown in, and there was somebody else to my right, which I think was a second witness, and I was just saying, just like old times, eh, and the guy was smiling, and then after, and it was kind of cold, but it wasn't too cold. And after that time, I was taken out. And I, and when I was, I could, when the door opened up, I could see that guy from the, almost like he was standing in the Roman Colosseum, you know. And he was looking at me, and it was like a big white room. If you ever seen when, like, uh, what do you call it? When, I'm trying to see if I can think of it. When the Dark Knight fought Bane or something, you see those kind of big rooms or those big white rooms. It was almost like that, but the Roman Colosseum, and he was just standing there, and he had soldiers and stuff. And then after I was taken out of that, I was put and I was hidden in a little corner, found myself in a restaurant, and then I saw some people poking around, waiting, looking at the middle of the restaurant. If you can picture people on two sides of the restaurant, the side I was standing... And then across from me. And in between that was a path. That you would walk in from the door going into the restaurant. All the way to the back where the uh, stainless steel counter was. And it was like a Chinese restaurant. And these people on my side. I could see. And, and the other side of course. They were pointing. They're like there goes the anti-man. There goes the anti-man. I was kind of looking over their shoulder. 
slightly and I was heading off in a certain place and he walked straight through this guy and he was kind of different than the other one walked straight through and he was bald headed had uh had glasses on and and he was just a center of attention flowing almost like an ambassador like something you would think of a pope or somebody that was really famous but kind of a religious figure somewhat but also very popular very tech very uh good w with the people i mean he just walked straight through went to the back of the i didn't see i couldn't see past that that countertop of the chinese restaurant but he walked back there and i could hear him fooling with something and he just throws uh, a tray of straws and it lands on that uh, stainless steel counter and it was a uh it was multicolored straws and I, I know the colors, you know, oftentimes represent the nations. And, and he's throwing out individual personality also represents color. Because when people take that mark, there's no more color. But this guy was different than the other one. He was like very, very, very popular. I mean, they respected the other one, but in a different way. It was more like militarily or his strength. But this one was just popular with the people. And... I had asked another time in a dream to see this guy, and I had seen him. And I said to myself, no, that can't be him. That can't be him. He looks too common. And I'd seen him more closer up at this point. But this guy, guys, somebody was looking at uh, on my channel, the, the Bible codes, and they put his name in, Yuval Noah Herreras. He's a Jew. And I don't have any problem on this channel with that. I'm not into that whole i'm against that whole you know racist stuff that people try to make jews just because you know, or the certain people over there just get bad or whatever i don't believe a, a person's a jew because of uh what they say or even their blood but jew means worshiper of god they have to worship god in spirit and truth but he's taken out got well well i'll say uh you know i've seen the guy i i looked him up and i was like i saw him in my dream that this looks just like him guys i said on my channel before that january 21st 2021 the lord told me i was in time elijah jesus literally looked at me and whispered into my ear you're elijah and i was expecting a booming voice or something he would asked me earlier do you want to know if you're a father or is it necessary for you to know if you're a father and he'd already talked to me in my mind about this whole elijah thing and so I guess I wanted to make sure and been praying for months because different things or whatever. And I said, are you asking me if I want to know I'm, I'm this end time messenger? And I said, yeah, if, if all this is riding on me and I'm, I'm, I've been, you know, struggling and stuff and all this is riding on me, I'd like to know. And then I had an hour long dream and a big rainstorm. And long story short, at the end of the dream, it, it seemed like hours just talking to him. I was like, just tell me. If I'm this end time messenger, if I'm this person you speak about. And Jesus just looked at me and he just whispered, you're Elijah. And then, you know, he got up and in the dream, he, he, he took the form also of this Tom Petty guy. And I know Jesus, you can just tell him no matter what bodies and you can just tell there's some quality different than him, than the angels. And, and Tom, actually, when I thought about it, it means twin and I, I'm a twin guys. I'm one of the two witnesses. He told me also, I'm a twin and uh and petty i felt like petty i felt like i was a nobody basically but this guy is the exact opposite and guess what guys he's born he's born one day after me like check this out uh the 11th tribe in of joseph basically means uh well yeah the 11th tribe of joseph sealed in the book of revelation means he will add and i've always been close to joseph because i had a story similar to him feeling betrayed you know from my dreams and different things and i've always associated with him i never associated with elijah too much to be honest but he just got me into that you know but anyways uh yeah uh so he was born 1976 11 years later i was born one day before his 11th birthday so I was born 11 years later, one day before his 11th birthday. I was born on February 23rd. He was born on February 21st or 24th. And the scripture says this false prophet's going to be able to call down fire from heaven. So at some point he's going to get 
uh, supernatural powers. Now, this guy on his channel, and I'll leave the link, you know, in the comment section. But this guy is saying everything Jesus has been talking to me. I've been talking to you guys about the book of Daniel chapter 7 a lot and about time, how the lion represented time, the bear represented physics, the uh, Grecian uh, people of the gray, basically, it means it represents gray matter, and it's that's one of the meanings to it. And the fourth represents world matter, which is uh, globalism. But... The reason why I've been doing this now I know is because this guy is explaining everything Jesus has been talking to me. And he actually speaks, he looks like a lamb, he speaks like a dragon. He looks innocent. He was talking to the people and he was just saying, you know, uh, you know, we've been around as a civilization, fake news has been around for thousands of years. Just look at the Bible. And he, and he starts laughing and he's basically saying that with technology we can become gods. This is, he literally said we can become gods. I'm not playing with you. And he said, the Bible and different stories about a big God in the sky and the clouds is just a myth, you know. And when, if you tell yourself a lie long enough, you'll believe it. And uh, he said, it's not a God in the clouds. He said, we have the cloud and cloud IBM, or he's just talking electronics and different stuff, nonsense. And, he, and I was talking to you guys about how the bear uh, in the book of Revelation or in the book of Daniel has three ribs in its mouth. And it's the next after the Lion King of Babylon. Well, I told you guys how Lion King of Babylon represents time. And Babylon means confusion. It's for a confusing time. It's two wings, he told me, were sense and nonsense that developed over time. Over that lion, lifted it up. And it got its wings plucked. And so I told you the next bear... Where that kingdom of media persia represented physics also had three ribs in its mouth and and um tower of babel was divided into three parts they had three intents they wanted to build up to the tower and this says it in the book of jasher it says they had three intents specifically they wanted to build up all the way to heaven then number two they wanted to overthrow god when they got there and number three they wanted to set up their own gods and God smite them in uh, three different ways, divided them, and, and he had burned two-thirds of it. He left the third of Babylon left. And God told me America is a third, and so we're going to finish off that third. And he said two-thirds should be struck down and die, but I'll bring a third through the fire. And so even though this country is going down, God's going to bring us, his people through who are ready. But basically... Uh, let me see if I can remember what I was saying to you. Oh, yeah, this this guy was saying, uh, I told you that time fell into physics in three parts. The same way you have that Lion King of Babylon. It falls down after its wings are plucked. Then you see the bear with the three ribs. A reference that it brought it down. You know, as a kingdom divided into three parts. Three is the number for change. It changed up the order of God. King of Babylon, his son changed uh, he was supposed to capture the vessels of god and bring them to, into subjection only 70 years and and not pour his own wine out of them but he took the gold and silver vessels that were sacred to god and he wanted to begin to pour out of them and drink wine and i told you that it represented the gold and silver vessels the anointed vessels gold represents his anointed in heaven it represents christ his anointed and the silver identity his people who know who they are. They have an identity. They're not like people who today say, don't be a national citizen, be a global citizen. Give up your identity. They have an, a, they're loyal to their nation of God, not to this world. And so he began to pour his wine, which represents wisdom, his own wisdom in that. And they talk about when you drink, you drink of the spirits. But he began to pour his own wine into them, representing uh, taking the servants of God, not only capturing them, but you pour your own teaching, your own, your own teaching into them. And they drink of that. And now they're really defiled. So he changed the order of God. That's the number three. He changed up the order of God, you know, and he also, the king of Nebuchadnezzar, wanted them to go bow down to that statue instead of bowing down to God. That was a change, the number three. 
but the next kingdom has the Medes and Persians. They have a law which cannot be changed. And they had those three ribs in their mouth. They had those three ribs. They have something called the temporal bone, guys, which is the time bone is basically what it means. And so bones can represent time also. You know, it can it can represent that. But there is three ribs. And he told me time fell into physics in three parts in the dream. Or, or, or uh, no, I'm sorry. Physics fell. Yeah, time fell into physics in three interpols. He said terrorism, cybercrime, and organized crime. This guy is speaking about cybercrime. I was saying how cybercrime hacking like a computer. First of all, they put terrorism over your head. You're so afraid. What are you going to do in the world? Then they have cybercrime. That your brain is like a computer. That you're like a computer. You can be uh, hacked, basically. And they can commit crimes through you. Demons can get in your mind, terrorize you so much, then tell you do this to save yourself. And then you end up destroying other other people and you in the process well he's talking about hacking humans humans are hackable and his ultimate argument seems to be where he's going to be going with this is we're being manipulated because they have all this data about you they know everything they can create certain algorithms that basically to control you you know like they know you like chocolate ice cream you like magazines you like video games and so they can control that in a certain way to bring those out at a certain time to even control the algorithms, control you. You see a magazine all of a sudden put in front of you, advertisement, you go after it. And it's just a little example about hackable humans. And he doesn't believe, you know, of course he believes the Bible is a myth, but, but some of these, uh, he's also gay guys. And in the dream, Jesus kept talking to me about the clues of this kingdom. It's the gay gospel, the pursuit of happiness. He's a sodomite. And, you know, uh, in the dream, I was even seeing Natalie Portman before. And, and she played Evie in uh, V for Vendetta. And she was representing Eve the, the first one, for the first woman, uh, Satan deceived. And, and she represented the whole world. Uh, Eve means the mother of all living. He put a mark of vengeance on her. He made her angry at what was done to her, turned her into V. And, and or Evie, I should say. And, and that's why you see that V for Vendetta movie. He's stirring her up to riot. In other words, these people violated you. You're a woman. This dictatorship violated you. Now get your freedom, you know, and, and basically uh, be like me, be a terrorist. But he was a terrorist, and we talked about terrorism. And then the, the second thing was a cybercrime, getting, hacking humans, basically. He got into her mind, basically. And I saw in the vision, she she's wearing that orange dress or whatever she's wearing in V for Vendetta. And her arms are open like a cross. And he shoots these, uh, uh, Neo shoots the, from the Matrix, shoots these, uh, it's representing the new Babylonian, Neo-Babylonian Empire. New Babylon. But he shoots these Matrix pills for a, a fake awakening into her and puts her to sleep but every, it's like everything we did since you know the time of jesus and everything it's like the the world went to sleep a deep sleep and they're dreaming everything they did is lively but they're in a dream and they're getting it's murder to their body sin and it's like she gave in to this new babylonian empire but she had an interview with him did a long talk with him this false prophet and it's showing everything jesus has been showing me in the dream he speaks every, he's kind of like me, but on an opposite plane. He believes, you know, like the sex and the, the drugs and, and the video games, everything handed in drug free drugs is, is getting us to where we don't want to do anything. We don't want to learn anything. And, and, and he's concerned about it. And, it, uh, you know, and they're also saying, you know, some of the stuff also you say seems negative, but they, they like them. And they're saying that. And, he, and he's saying it's his job as a historian or whatever to move people to action or whatever. And that's often what a prophet does. But he's admired by Obama and Bill Gates and I can't, and Mark Zuckerberg. And this guy started out as a historian and he's kind of now talking about the next step is to get technology under your skin is what he's saying. And he's globalist, of course. He says he doesn't believe in free will. Sound, sounds like a person, guys, that, uh, is going to require you to take a chip. He doesn't believe in free will. 
And I come into this often when when you see um, homosexual homosexuals, you know. And every sin people need to repent of. But when you watch The Matrix, it's all about this system of control. You're being controlled. Now you need to break out of it. You need to take this red pill. So the reason why I think he's telling people uh, they don't have free will is because, you know, he wants to advocate that this system the way we have it is a system of slavery and we need something new but guys this system is like a womb that's what matrix means but the system that's hard is to teach you to develop the development of a child so you can grow and you can grow up like a baby uh you can grow up in the lord and you can be burns born spiritually if you try to take that baby out of that womb out of that pain process too long out of that dark you know where you know, too long, or uh, too early, I should say, It's it's he's going to die. And they're trying to liberate people from this natural system God's allowed because of sin to try to develop us. Because, you know, through uh, much tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. You know, there's talks that we're going to get out of here without any problems. And, and I respect people, but Jesus, I used, I would believe either way, I could see it both sides when I'd read it. I just honestly didn't know, and then I talked to Jesus, and he told me, we're going to go through three and a half years, I mean, in the dream, and, and showed me this stuff. But it's going to be okay, he'll protect us. But And I was protected from that guy at that time. If we're out of sin, he will protect us. But guys, this guy, uh, he, he looks just like who I saw in the dream, guys. And he acts just like I would think the false prophet would act, guys. It's like coming off the pages. And I'm going to put it in the uh, in the comment section, you know. And so uh, check this guy out. But uh, he has a lot of interesting views, guys. And it's sort of like me on the historian looking up history and everything. But he thinks we've been, you know, we're being manipulated. But we need the free market. We need... Uh, people should be able to make their own choice. But, guys, the free market is what is enslaved people. Because I saw just a bunch of junk out there on the open. And the more you went into it, the more you would have free there. And you couldn't find anywhere to lay your head. It was just piled and piled and piled. You were going downward slowly. And you couldn't get out of it it's like you were you couldn't have anywhere to lay down you had all those treasures so it forced you to keep looking because there was nowhere to lay your head so you were restless and he's telling people uh the the free market and things are under attack but the free market is actually how they're gaining their hackiness he's against p people being hacked or manipulated as he calls it you know but they are because the free market all this stuff is controlling you it is hacking you it's getting in your brain the alcohol is hacking your mind saying drink me the pornography when you do it is saying you know look at me and he's trying to fight a system that he's at the same time supporting and so it's very inconsistent but he doesn't know that demons have originally hacked humans and he's already hacked guys and he's he's right for this and and his intelligence isn't he has intelligence but he's going to get higher form the devil god told me there's going to i had a dream about him something's going to happen where he's going to uh, uh just yesterday when i was praying about this something's going to happen to him something's going to die in him is what jesus told me that's all he told me at that time but uh he you know Satan, you know, speaks through him and stuff, and it's flowing. He's going to know a lot more than he knows now, but he knows enough, and, and you can see, you can already see the spirit, guys. And he just has, you know, when he does pictures and stuff, uh, he just has this look of arrogance on his face. And people love this guy. But anyways, I will, I will send, uh, I'll put this in the uh, comment section. Just check it out, guys. Check out this guy. Alright guys, I love you. Till next time, shalom.